What's going on guys? This is John. Today I want to do an interesting video regarding 401ks. What are they? Are they a good idea? What are the pros and the cons? And what have I learned over the last 20 years investing in 401ks at some of the top global companies? And have I, and I've amassed a balance of around half a million dollars. But before you get all excited, there are definitely things that aren't all shiny and good, which I plan to expose in this video. And hopefully it can help you when you consider what a 401k means as part of your overall investment and saving strategies. Before I get into the details, if you're finding my station for the first time, just a really quick introduction. As I said, my name is John. I'm almost 41 years old and I started a YouTube channel in January of 2019 with simple mission. While I believe I'm very successful in my life, I feel I'm not working to the highest level of my potential in business, wealth, health, finance, all areas. I feel my potential is, is very high and is, and is great. And I wanted to hold myself accountable to achieve a certain level of greatness by chronicling a journey over 24 months using YouTube as a way to show what my journey looks like, the challenges, the struggles, with the hope of about two years from now being able to put a lot of great content online and having a goal of helping people in their journey in life to hopefully achieve a level of excellence they could really feel proud of. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, if you find the content I'm about to share helpful, I'd really appreciate you sharing a comment, good or bad, doesn't matter to me. Subscribe to the channel, I put content on there at least once, maybe twice a day. And if you find this content useful that somebody you know can benefit from, I'd really appreciate you sharing it. Anyway, going back to a 401k plan. First of all, what's the history? Do we even know what 401k is and what it stands for? Basically, let's take a look back. Long time ago, before the Industrial Revolution, a lot of people made a living living on farms. They cultivated land, they grew crops, they sold crops for a profit, and that was what was in their family for generations. And the success of that farm melt, meant that the offspring and people uh, living on the farm, that's what, they, that's what they looked for to survive. Fast forward, the Industrial Revolution starts. Then factories and manufacturing plants were created. Employers needed to find a way to incentivize farmers to leave their land and come work for a company. They came up with a pension plan. Pensions were basically the idea of work for us, put in your sweat equity over a large number of years. When you get to retirement, we will take care of you and pay you. We'll send you a monthly check through your entire retirement years, through your entire retirement years until you die. Sounds great. Well, what ended up happening? The more people that get pumped into the retirement age, the cost to companies skyrocketed. The amount of money that they were paying out really didn't factor in what the future of the company looked like. What was the future earnings gonna look like? What were the expenses of that company gonna look like in the future? It just ended up becoming too expensive. So, in 1978, the government of the United States released a new tax code called the 401k, which ended up allowing employers to offer tax deferred accounts to their employees as a way of taking payroll tax, uh, as a way of taking payroll, taking some of that money and putting it into a 401k plan, which meant that they themselves as employers would lower their corporate tax liabilities. So the impression was it was a win for companies because they're lower their, they're lower their tax as well as it would be a benefit for employees because they would lower their um, they would lower their taxable income, grow a nest egg that would allow the growth to be tax deferred, and then when they retire, they'd have enough of a nest egg to live about, to live off of until they die. That was the idea. That was the principle. Well, let's start taking a look at all of the factors because some of the statistics are mind-boggling. I learned that around uh, 2017, 2015, something like that, there was something like $5 trillion worth of invested money in the United States in four, qualified 401k plans. Out of that, on average, if somebody started investing at age 25, approximately $139,000 worth of fees total fees would have been paid across the entire lifespan of that 401k plan. Realize what kind of money we're talking about when on average people didn't even realize that there were fees at all. And if they were, they weren't even understanding 
how those fees were calculated, how to even see what those fees were. So the education of employees participating in these was very low. Yet everyone was told, you work for a company, if they are offer a 401k plan, that should be your driver and your main strategy for saving money. Guys gotta be careful here, and I've learned a lot over the last 20 years, and this is now what I wanna share with you. Um, let me be clear, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not a financial advisor, a financial planner. Everyone's situation is unique. So please don't take what I'm about to say as your, your reference for your savings strategy. Everyone should always consult with an accountant, a tax advisor, financial planner. There's so many factors here. But what I do plan to share with you is some practical, real world and concrete details that you can take away to really summarize the basics and the goods and the bads with 401k plans. First, let's start with the pros. What are the good things about a 401k plan? Well, first, most important is a company match. What does that mean? Well, first, let's be clear. Not every company you work for is required or will offer as part of a talent retention, a 401k plan. If they do, the match that they offer will also vary depending on if they're a small, um, a, a larger or small company, yeah? What is a match? A match has two components. First, there is a percentage that a company will match up to, which I'll explain, and there's a dollar amount of what they'll match. An example is, a company will match 50 cents per dollar up to 6% of your contributions. This means that for every dollar you choose to invest in a 401k, a company will match half of that up to 6%. So if you invest 3% of your paycheck and 3% equals just for argument's sake $100 they will match an extra 50 because you're within 6%. If you match 10 per, if you contribute 10% of your salary and let's say that 10% is $200 the first 6% of that 10% the company will match half and the remaining 40%, there is no match. It's just coming from your paycheck. And that's money that will come off of your taxable income. The company I work for now has an excellent plan. They match dollar for dollar up to 6%. That means if I invest $300, and I, let's say that's the caps, that, that's 6%. So I invest that 6%. I'm basically doubling my contribution every single paycheck times two, which will get me my per month. So what you want to see is what is the match and does your company offer one and what are the rules? The other thing you have to look at is what is the vesting period? When you get your HR material, some companies will say, we will allow you to contribute to the 401k, but only after three months. Or you can go ahead and contribute right away, but there is a vesting period over a few years. Maybe every year you can own 20% of that. Or another way is you can contribute what you want and you're vested immediately, but whatever we as a company contribute or match, there's a vesting period on that. That's what my um, company has on a profit sharing type program where they're contributing every year a certain percentage. I have to be there five years to get 100% of that, but every year I get 20% of that 100%. So the pro is if you can gain access to working for a company that matches, that's free money, uh, and there has to be an appropriate vesting period. That's pro number one. Pro number two is you are able to uh, reduce your taxable income every month. This doesn't mean you avoid it. Okay? You have to pay tax when you retire, but you're able to, at the moment in time, reduce your current taxable income, and if it's large enough, um, you're able to reduce your federal tax uh, bracket as well. Um, three is your gains 
on your 401k balance will grow in a tax deferred way. That means that you are not penalized every year, for example, on the growth in your 401k balance. The last pro from my perspective, which I think many people would argue is not a good idea, but I'm now looking at this for a way to get cash in your hand and invest it in a wise way, like maybe putting a down payment on an investment property that's cash flow positive. You are allowed to take out loans. An example. You can take a loan penalty-free from your 401k plan, normally up to a certain balance. In my case, my balance is around $500,000, but if I choose to take out a loan, I can't take out a loan of more than $50,000. I'm now required to pay my loan back, and I could extend that up to five years, paying myself back with interest, the only exception to that five years is if I'm buying a home and can produce uh, closing statements that show that I'm buying a home, they'll allow you more time to pay that loan back. But generally speaking, a loan is taking money out of your 401k, getting charged to pay yourself back with interest and having to pay that back on a monthly basis. Now be careful because some company policies may vary. For example, if you take out a loan and six months later you leave the company, some plans may say, you've got 90 days to pay that loan back in full, otherwise you're gonna be taxed on it like taxable income. Some companies may allow you, like my company uh, allows me to leave the company and as long as I pay back on time, consistently until it's paid back, I won't get penalized. So you need to understand what policies exist for a loan, but I put loan as a pro because if you take that money out and put it to good use and invest it and gain from that more than you may have would or equal to what you would have had in your 401k, the benefit is you've got cash in your account. It's, it's cash flowing. Um, it's not like you're wasting it on a, on a Ferrari or something stupid like that. So these are the four things I looked at and considered when, what are the good things about a 401k plan? Now that we've discussed the pros from my perspective of a 401k, let's now take a look at the cons or the negatives. The first con is the concept of annual fees. Many Americans I've read don't even know that fees exist in a 401k. They think it's free. Or if they have an idea that there are fees, they don't know how they're calculated, they don't know how to read them in their annual statements, or they don't even know how to look up a fund they wanna invest in to see what kind of fee structures they have. Generally speaking, there are two types of fees that exist in a 401k plan. The first fee is called a participation fee. The second fee is called an investment fee. Participation fee is a, is a fee that your uh, 401k provider has. Um, for example, Fidelity is who our company uses. Participation fees cover the costs of managing your transaction, the company's transactions, um, the cost of legal fees, administration costs of bookkeeping, etc. Uh, that's generally a fixed amount on an annual basis. Next is an investment fee. Investment fees are actually the cost to manage your balance. Um, and these come in the form of a percentage. And another word to describe investment fees is what's called an expense ratio. Generally speaking, an expense ratio at or below 1% is a target you want to get at. But even 1% to 2% sounds small, but over the life of, retire of, of savings, it's actually quite high. You've heard me say in my introduction that on average, all Americans paid approximately over the life of their 401k, assuming they started investing at age 25 to probably age 60, was almost $139,000. Where did that money come from? It's from these two fees. And an investment fee, you have to be very careful. Certain fees, um, or sorry, certain investment fees will be lower for certain types of funds you invest in, especially index type funds that follow something like the S&P 500. The cost to maintain those funds is relatively small. Whereas if you have some kind of specialty fund where you have a portfolio manager selecting what they think are the best in breed stocks that are gonna have the best growth over the mid to long term, um, those fees could be quite higher. 
uh, you know, in the range of one and a half to two and a half percent. Just to put this in the context, for an expense ratio of two percent, that means for every one thousand dollars you have in your account every year, twenty dollars of that is going to go to investment fees. I have five hundred thousand dollars approximately in my account. That means if I was ignorant enough to not know what kind of fees I'm paying, and I'm paying the average of what Americans are, which is two percent. That means every year, $10,000 is getting out of my account and going to the provider, which over the long term is quite a bit of money. And it's a shame if I were to let it get that high. I've been very careful in terms of the funds I'm contributing to. So my average fee structure is well below 1% on average. But fees is very important uh, as step one. Step two is the age restriction. You cannot touch this money until you're 59 and a half. Sure, there are some exceptions. If you are recruited in, or drafted into the military, um, if you have a natural disaster, if you need to pay uh, like for something like a funeral, you can take what's called hardship withdrawals and the penalty structure there is a bit less. But under normal circumstances, if you've got a balance in your 401k and you're not 59 and a half, but you want to go ahead and take money out, the, um, the country is going to do two things. First, they're going to charge you a flat 10% penalty right off the bat. And two, they're going to consider that distribution as taxable income. So you will be incurring federal tax against that. And depending on where you live, certain states may also charge you a tax as well. Let's just say, for example, that if I needed $10,000 and I had no other way to get that money and I resorted to taking an early withdrawal from my 401k, if I withdrew $10,000, I'm going to get in my pocket much less because of this. I'd have to take out a few thousand more just to gain access to $10,000. So this is why I put the age requirement as the second con, because while you may look wealthy on paper, no matter how well you're doing in, in your career, that money is sitting in an account in somebody else's pocket, and you cannot touch that until you're uh, at the uh, age of 59 and a half, which really sucks if you, you, know, you want to take that money and, and do something with it, or you're killing it in your career, and you want to now invest that money a little bit more wisely. It's really not your money until you reach that age. So that's con number two. Con number three is there's a cap. In 2019, you are maxed out in a 401k plan at $19,000. So you are limited up to an extent in terms of the amount of contributions you can make. So if all you're doing is worrying about a 401k plan and you're maxing the hell out of it out on a yearly basis, you're maxing out at $19,000. I know that $19,000 is a lot of money. You have to really be a high earner to, to realize that money. Um, but still, there's a, a decent cap on that depending on um, what you're considering as a strategic investment. And here, if this, is your only, if this is only part of your investment strategy, this isn't gonna help you out over the long term in terms of uh, how long that money will last in, in a 401k balance. Con number four is you are taxed, of course, but there's a lot of variables. I have no idea what's going to happen in 20 years when I'm of the age where I could tap into my account. Law of averages would suggest, because I know I'm a hard worker, that I'm going to continue to work hard. I'm going to continue to make more money. But as you make more money, of course, you're now... Um, hitting that top end of the tax bracket structure. I'm using today's information as uh, my guiding principle. I think the top earners, if you're making the most money in, uh, in the country, 35 or 37 percent is the most that you'll have to pay in terms of a federal tax bracket. But that's today. If you were to do research and see what, do the, what is the highest federal tax percentage one would have paid since like 1910, I believe you'll find around 1944, 1945, that number was at or over 90%. 90% tax from a federal government perspective. 
Here we have 35 to 37%, I think, is a top. That's one of the lowest we've seen. So my point is, I am banking on or hoping I have a decent, uh, a, a lower tax bracket in the future. But 20 years from now, I have no idea. Okay, for all I know, with the the federal um, ta the the federal debt is at 22 trillion dollars. You think that's going to grow or shrink? In 20 years, that's going to continue to grow. And how's a how's a country going to pay for that? They need revenue, and one way they're going to gain access to quite a bit of revenue is collecting tax. So my bet is these taxes are going to continue to go up. So my plan is if I had a million dollars. Based on my current plan, I'm saying if I had a million dollars in my 401k by the time I retire, that money could be taxed at 40% for all I know, 35%. It's not half, it's not a million dollars, it's significantly less. Then I'm required to stretch out that money for as long as I live. And I don't know how long I'm gonna, I'm gonna live. I hope I live a long time and I could actually enjoy the fruits of my labor. So you see my point? This isn't real money right now. It's paper. I can't do anything with it. I'm living a hope game. I hope I reach retirement. I hope I'm healthy enough to use that money. And I hope that that money allows me to live a long time. Let's play out one scenario. Let's say that's a million dollars. And let's just assume, because I'm a pessimist in this case, that Social Security isn't going to be around. I can't bank on Social Security being around for 20 years. And let's say I take a lump sum. I want that million dollars. I'm gonna be completely conservative, which isn't realistic because I said you're gonna be taxed on it, but let's pretend that I have a million dollars and I gain access to a million dollars. That's what I have in my bank account at age 60. How long will that last? Well, how many assumptions do I have to take? What's my mortgage? Am I helping pay for children's ed my children's education? Am I helping pay for my child's wedding? Am I helping pay um, my own medical expenses, God knows what's going to happen in 20 years. That million dollars, if I took $4,000 every month, that money's going to last me around 25 years, which means if I budget myself well, don't have any debt on a home or have minimal expenses, 4000 who the hell lives on $4,000? I don't know about you. I live on the East Coast in New Jersey. That's not a lot of money. My Property taxes alone are $13,000 a year. $4,000, right? So now I'm spending a career saving money to then get to retirement and have to budget myself to an extent that I can't enjoy it. The hell with that, right? I, I wanna live. <laughs> I wanna use that money. I wanna go on vacations. I wanna go on cruises. I wanna play golf, right? But instead I gotta nickel and dime myself and my family. That's not a strategy. So. The fact that I'm taxed on that money coming out means I'm taxed regardless, right? Yes, I put that money in pre-tax. It grows tax deferred, but I'm still paying tax on it. And at least now, I know what my tax situation is. I know what my lifestyle is. 20 years from now, who the hell knows? So I'm banking on a lot and in the same time giving my money to Fidelity. So for the next 20 years, they have the ability to do what they want with it. Kind of sucks, right? What's the last con I want to share? Let's just call this the fiduciary responsibility is lopsided. So what does this mean? In 2008, 52% of 401k value got wiped out. If you were within retirement age of the, last, the next few years, you were screwed. You had to then pump in a number of extra years just to get through recovering some of those savings. You suffered. Those guys maybe lost their jobs over the long term because of stress and whatnot, but they still got paid. So I think my point here is 401k plans have a lot of factors. My learning until now is this cannot be your only part of your investment strategy, and it should actually only be used in certain cases. So what is my overall viewpoint I would impart upon you when considering a 401k? Well, do I think a 401k is a wise investment? Yes. 
if only your company offers a match. Match is free money. I am getting my, uh, mat, my contributions doubled every month, and I've been doing that for the last few years. I've made a significant amount on paper in my 401k due to a match. So if you're lucky enough to work for a company that A, offers a 401k, and B, they have a match, I say take advantage of it, but don't go anything above what their percentage threshold is. So if they say we'll offer 50%, for every 50 cents for every dollar up to 6%, don't go above 6%. Take it to the limit of that match and nothing more than that. However, if a company doesn't offer a match, I don't think it's that big of a deal, right? Because that means that you're thinking there is no other way to invest money. My recommendation would be take that money you would put in an account and open up a brokerage account in a IRA or a Roth IRA, but those are individual accounts that you manage. Why? Because while a Roth IRA, as an example, has a cap of $6,000 per year, I think that's what 2019 is, um, it's after-tax money, yeah, so you're getting taxed up front, but everything else after that is already after-tax dollars, and you're gaining a financial literacy and you can manage that much more effectively than putting it into a 401k plan that you can't touch for 20, 30 years, depending on what age you are. Um, that would be uh, point one is, is, is if there's a match. If the answer is no, there is no match, I would consider alternative options. If the answer is yes, there's a match, I would consider doing it, but only up to the percentage of what the policy of the company is with their match. Um, these are some key factors yet yeah, that I wanted to, that I really wanted to share with you. And now when I look at my own situation, I'm going to share with you something really odd because I have around 20 years left, according to the government of when I could retire. Um, but I want to retire much sooner. So I have, according to my clock, 10 to 12 years to really make some wise investment decisions. One of the things I'm actually considering, and this is where I'll do videos to help show if I take this leap and how this works out for me is, I believe I can do better with the money that I have now and put myself in a better position 10 years from now versus continuing to rely uh, predominantly on my 401k plan. What I mean by that is going ahead and considering taking an early withdrawal. Taking the proceeds of that and eventually looking to invest in real estate. Real estate that is cash flow positive, where I could have depreciation over the buildings that I own, where I could have my renters uh, pay down my debt, otherwise known as amortization. And I actually have, on a monthly basis, something that's paying me passive income. I believe this is the wiser thing to do. Um, if I was within five years of retiring, not a wise thing to do. But since I have 20 years ahead of me, I'm actually considering taking a loan at best, but at worst, taking a withdrawal against my 401k, biting the bullet and paying those hefty fees, but over the 15 to 20 years of me putting that into wise investments, in the long run, I will pay back or pay up those fees lost, and then everything after that being profit by these factors here. Sounds crazy, I know. I'm doing a ton of research around what are some of my options here, and what are my best vehicles to do this? And are there options that are wise within the state of New Jersey? But I'm being honest with you that I've come to the realization that I don't want to sit idle, not being able to touch my money and hope things work out. Hope I'm healthy enough to gain access to this money. Hope my tax bracket is you know, at a range that's not going to completely eat away at uh, that savings balance when I'm ready to withdraw it. And, and hope that Social Security is there to help supplement my income. I'm tired, you know, I don't want to hope. Nobody should hope. You should take matters into your own hands, be accountable, and find ways to increase your income. Okay? 
Don't worry about increase your savings. Find ways to increase your income. Income that could pay you monthly, best case. A little bit worst case on a quarterly basis and at minimum on a yearly basis. Um, another way you could do that with alternative uh, investments if you don't invest in a 401k, as I said, IRAs, uh, Roth, a traditional IRA, um, a Roth IRA, and open up brokerage accounts where you can invest in stocks that pay dividends. So you're getting money back on a quarterly or yearly basis, whatever the schedule is. Um, you're in control of that money, so that's all after tax. Yes, you're going to get taxed on the gains. But when you consider a well-balanced uh, portfolio, you could find ways to erase um, the, the tax burden on such things. So, look, I'm not a tax expert. What I'm trying to do is open your eyes to say that 401ks is not the only answer. And in certain cases, it may not even be best to do. And you can consider other options. My goal now is to do a lot of research and report back through these videos what I'm learning and what I'm seeing. But everyone has the same access as I do to the internet and books. So I encourage you to explore this and make your own decision and share your own opinions, what you think here. Um, I'm just sharing my lessons learned with my situation and what I've gathered in terms of knowledge over 21, oh, oh, of 21 years of investing in this thing and really considering what does life look like for me when I retire and am I, am I on the right path? Thank you so much, guys, for your time. I hope this was helpful. I hope I explained it in a way that was easy. You were easily able to digest it. If you like this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel where I uh, share not videos only about things like money, but personal motivation, health, um, an outlook on life, maintaining positive attitudes and being optimistic, things like that I think you would find very interesting. So I encourage you to subscribe. If not, no hard feelings. I wish you well on your journey and finding how you can gain your wealth and how you can find your best investment decisions. Until next time, guys, I wish you well and talk to you soon. Thanks.